in this episode seven of there just has to be a better way i came up with a way to fix this concrete floor without doing the conventional method of jackhammering it all out and pouring a new floor this floor was poured approximately 1960 so it's been in there about 60 years it's been cracked for a long time and the concrete was poured right on the ground and those posts are set into the concrete so to do it correctly I would have to cut those posts off raise the building jackhammer out the concrete dig down and pour it again well I did a lot of research and I found one person and I don't remember his name or where I saw it because I did this years ago he showed how to do a floating concrete floor so I'm going to show how I did the floating concrete floor and it's had many years of service and it's never cracked here's how you do a floating concrete floor first step would be to evaluate what you got and as you can see I've got cracks everywhere and here's a close-up that you can look down in wide cracks and they're filled up with sand and dirt so what I ended up doing I got some concrete patch and I patched all the cracks now it's not going to hold because it's just going to crack again but for right now it is filled then I borrowed a cement mixer one of the big old horses and then I got some six mil plastic and following the guy's instructions I laid it on top of the concrete and then put down that wire mesh because that's going to hold it together now the idea is you pour your concrete on top of that plastic the wire mesh holds it together and the plastic allows the concrete to float on top of the bad concrete so the bad concrete can do anything it wants and the top will just float so once I got that done from the door to the mixer I got it as close as I could get it and then I built a little ramp so that I could run my wheelbarrow up in then I bought 36 bags of quickcrete sand topping mix and I started mixing it one bag at a time. I did this all by myself. I couldn't find anybody to help me that day. So I would mix up one bag. I also found that you can't mix two bags and push the wheelbarrow up that ramp. I just didn't have the horsepower to do it. So it was one bag at a time, 36 times. So you dump it, and that's about three dumps and then so that's three bags and then I took the float and I leveled it a little bit and as you added more and more I reached a point that I had to broom it or I wouldn't be able to reach it so I stopped about halfway and then I broomed it it's not dead level but it's a whole lot better than it was so I've got the two inches of that quick creep topping mix as you can see and half of it's broomed here's a close-up of the brooming so that it's not going to be slippery and here's another picture of how I got a little bit farther along and I mean this was a all afternoon thing all by myself and there's what a dump looks like right in front of the door that's one bag so you can see that there was truly 36 bags and finally I got the whole thing done and broomed you could kind of see where the one section of broom was done and then the second section started but it's a little storage shed it doesn't really matter so it started to dry and I had all I wanted that day because it was it was a lot of work and finally this is the only shot that I have of the floor I'm I cut a hole at the far end and I'm putting in a door but you can see the floor and it looks pretty good and all I can say is that it worked for me 
And if I had to do it again, I would have. The only mistake I made was not cutting that doorway first and extending the floating floor out onto the concrete pad on the other side because that's the same pad that was poured and then the building was set on top. So in the episode 8, you'll see how I fixed that part of the concrete pad. But anyway, that's how you do a floating concrete pad. It worked for me. I would hope it would work for you.